In this video, we walk through the Map Admin Tools which is the perspective native application to set up your map system inside of Ignition Platform. As you can see, we support four popular SQL engines, Postgres, MS SQL, Oracle, and MySQL. For this video, we use MySQL. Here in Workbench, I create an empty database called GIS and I use it for creating the DB connection inside Ignition. If you already have a database connection in the Ignition, you can pass this step. After filling out all entries and clicking on the Create Connection button, the DB connection is created for us in Ignition. In step 2, you need to select one of the available database connections to use for the map engine. I select the one we create in the last step. In step 3, as our database is empty, I click on Generate Schema button, so the map tables are created for us. Now the tables are created in our database. If you have a database connection that already has map tables, you can ignore this step and go to the next one. This page shows you all out-of-the-box asset types. Here we can add a new one or edit an existing one. The asset is categorized into four groups. Polygon, which is used for displaying an area or zone on the map. Polyline, which is used for displaying pipelines, power grids, and rails. The marker is used for displaying stationary assets or buildings. And finally, the vehicle is used for mobile assets like helicopters, ships, or cars. Each asset type has an icon that can be changed via the available icon library. The polygon and polyline asset types have style options for configuring dash style, stroke width, stroke color, fill color, and opacity. You can play with these options to get your desired visual effect on the map. The source column is used to link a pre-made perspective view for each asset type which is used for displaying related information on the map. Out of the box we offer sample view designs that can be used for most applications so you can quickly edit them based on your specific application. You can browse available options or create your own in Ignition Designer and then select it from here. Based on the asset type, this view will be used as a pop-up, dashboard, or marker on the map. If you don't need an asset, you can delete it from the database. If you are not sure and may use it in the future, you can uncheck the Enable column so it isn't available on the map. You can also set whether the asset is rendered at startup by default on the map by checking the Show column. By clicking the Undo icon, anytime you can undo the changes before clicking the Save button. There is also an option for exporting and importing from other databases as CSV files. Now we are going to create a new asset type called Site. First, we create a perspective view to represent our marker on the map. Then we click on the new asset, give it a name, select an icon for it, and choose Marker for Map Object. From the Source column, we select the view that we created earlier for this marker. Finally, give an ID and save it. You can always come back to this page from the menu option for further editing. After finishing step 4, we are now on the Asset Management page. This page can also be accessed at any time from the main menu. The main goal here is to create your enterprise tree hierarchy. By default, we create some demo applications here, so you can test all available features. The Map Engine supports multi-tenant applications in either one gateway with separated databases for each project, or one database for all projects. If using one database for all your projects like this demo example, create a company node for each project and put their related assets below them. By clicking the New Asset button, the new doc page will appear which gives you the option to pinpoint or draw your asset on the mini-map. As you create nested assets, the mini-map filter and only shows the parent asset and its children to help you better visualize their relationship with your new asset. The first thing you should do is select your type from the available list and based on the selected type, you can either pinpoint or draw your asset on the map. For pinpoint, you have the option to type coordinate if you like. 
In drawing mode, you can undo your last step by pressing the right mouse button or simply press clear all icon to clear all drawings. The mini-map also updates the total distance of the drawn polyline or polygon. Each asset has optional properties. You can add, delete, or edit properties by clicking the Edit Properties icon as shown here. As some assets have real-time data, you need to browse and select the related tag path for those assets. This tag path will be used inside of the source view to display asset information in the shape of a dashboard, pop-up, or marker. For example, for the vehicles, this refers to the real-time latitude, longitude, speed, and other GPS information. Like view resources, we offer tag structure design for most applications out of the box, so you can easily manipulate them based on your specific application. You can edit any asset on the tree by double-clicking it or selecting the Edit button. By selecting other available databases from this list, you can export and import their data into this database to save time. As the number of assets increases it is hard to find your asset in the tree, in this case, you can search it and the tree expands and highlights all matches for you. It is also possible to copy, cut, and paste assets in the tree. Finally, you can delete any selected node in the tree. Now, it's time to see all your assets on the map by pressing the Finish button. If your data is coming from a GIS application like ArcGIS, you can export it as a GeoJSON file and import it from this menu. Here, we have the option to specify which type of feature we like to import, the target database, the default folder to which data will be imported, the default types to use, the prefix for naming, and finally the number of items to import. Selecting the GeoJSON file will preview all data in the table as well as available properties. By default, none of the properties will be used in import unless the user selects them. For each item, it is possible to change the default parent folder, name, and type or delete it. You also can browse and select the tag path here as well. Finally, by pressing the Save button all items will be saved into the database. The result of import will be shown here for each item. On the map view you review and see all your assets before publishing to the client project. The map view has the following features. 1. Cluttering and decluttering, the asset will increase in size and show more details by zooming in. 2. Alarm monitoring, assets have alarms indicated by red cycle animations. 3. Filtering by asset types, the user can select and hide which asset types will render or hide on the map from the asset type list. 4. Changing theme, based on the map tile or application theme, the UI theme will be changed in light and dark mode. 5. Filter based on area or zone, only select areas with their children will be rendered and the map will be recenter and fit for them. 6. Searching assets. From the asset hierarchy, the user can search for a specific asset. The map locates the asset and zooms in. 5. Selected pipelines will be highlighted in this mode. If the asset has custom properties, they will show here. 
7 dashboard and pop-up clicking on each asset will open the mini dashboard or pop-up which summarizes important information it is possible to acknowledge the alarms from here Here are some of the examples of the dashboard and pop-up for different applications. If supported by the asset, the user can go to the related HMI page from here or by pressing Ctrl and clicking on the asset. If the asset has custom properties, they will show here. 9. Mobile Asset Tracking The real-time location of the mobile assets is uploaded the on-map. The history of the track can also be shown in any time frame. The history of the track can also be exported to an Excel file. History Playback For mobile assets, the history location of the asset can be playback on the map. 11. Measuring Mode User can draw any path on the map to measure the total distance. The total measurement is updated at the bottom of the map. 12. Supporting custom layers like weather layers. Thank you for watching this video.